Jesus said it with great explicitness when he declared, Did not Moses give you the law? And none of you has kept it. D. James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. There is a profound distrust in America of those whom we expect to uphold justice. This week on Truths That Transform, we look at the state of justice and integrity in our federal government. Like a lot of Americans, I'm very suspicious of my own government. It's gotten so big. And we'll consider why there appears to be very deep levels of corruption within our own government. So much has become politicized in a, in a very aggressive way. We are taking a look at justice and corruption and hope for the future, all on today's Truths That Transform. This is Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. We are facing a crisis in our culture. It's a crisis in confidence as the institutions we expect to enforce justice and uphold the law seem to have instead become instruments of ideological warfare. Powerful entities like the Justice Department, the FBI, and the IRS have seemingly gone rogue as bureaucrats and operatives within grind political axes through government force. On today's program, we will look at this troubling phenomenon, and you'll see how departing from God's Word has enabled it. And we'll share some vital new resources with you designed to help us recapture our lost freedom. As we begin, Dr. Matthew Spaulding is a vice president at Hillsdale College's Washington, D.C. campus. A constitutional expert, he's the author of We Still Hold These Truths, Rediscovering Our Principles, Reclaiming Our Future. He recently sat down with our own John Rabe to discuss the state of our federal government. There's a lot of concern, I think, in our nation today about our governing structures. Address that crisis of confidence that I think people are rightly experiencing in some of these executive branch uh, agencies. Uh, well, part of it is, is to just remember, remember from the very beginning, part of the American character was always have a certain healthy skepticism about government, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's the American Revolution. So that's always been there. And, and essentially, it's part of our constitutional system, right? There, there are checks on government. The, the whole essence of it is to put brakes on government, partially because from the founding forward, and in the founding you see very clearly, uh, we have distrust of human nature. Right? They're, they're prone to do things. Uh, whether we understand that is it's man's sinful nature or just his, his political passions, right? We have checks on government. So, so that, that essential quality has always been there. This is not something that is uh, improper, shall I say. Um, but over time, especially over the last you know, half of this 20th century especially, um, government has been doing more and more and more things. And so the likelihood of government doing more and more things badly has been increasing. Uh, also of late, in the last uh, 10, 15 years or so, uh, government is doing more and more things, and um, individuals, uh, executives, uh, people in the administration are realizing they, they can do more and more things without Congress. Uh, is it is increasing temptation to politicize those operations? So, so in that sense, the, the, a, a very pl pl politicized FBI, which I think we're seeing now, um, is in many ways a harbinger of, of, or a, a signal of a deeper problem, which is that more and more what government does is outside of the normal political processes that we can kind of check. They're accumulating all these powers of government which ought to be separated. Now, 
in the midst of that, given human nature, the temptation to use that for political purposes, when your enemies, your political enemies, are potentially winning an election through the popular branches, you can block it through either executive power or using judicial power. That temptation is old as, as man himself. Um, but that's exactly what the Constitution, the rule of law, is meant to prevent. And the problem now is it's not being prevented. It would be hard to argue against the notion that there has been an erosion of the moral base of the nation. And when you have an erosion of the moral base of the nation, it seems that the only thing left is sort of that Nietzschean idea of the will to power, the pursuit of, of power. And, and it seems like that's directly what we have playing out here. When you don't have a shared moral consensus as a nation anymore, it's just who can get to the levers and pull them first. Isn't that kind of what we see playing out? No, I, I, I think that's right. And, and um, uh, if you think of government as having checks uh, in itself, but of course the check on that and the ultimate legitimacy behind all of that is the American people. And they need to have the type of character and cultural baggage or you know, uh, strength, if you will, or rootedness to make good moral decisions. Uh, absolutely. I think it's important for, for Christians um, and those broadly with moral concerns about the, uh, our, our culture uh, to keep in mind here, however, that how do you get back to that we can't uh, remove ourselves from those political questions. Getting those right is important because that will entail a decentralization of government's authority, the diminishing of its, of its authority, which will allow for a flourishing of precisely those cultural institutions which you and I both know are the ones that are the source of that moral character and that moral rootedness that make for not only good self-governing citizens but good moral uh, believing citizens. Dr. Spaulding, it's always a pleasure. Thank it's you for your you. information and knowledge. We appreciate you being with Thank us. Thank you. One of the most striking paradoxes in our culture today is an increasing dependence on government, while at the same time we see a growing distrust in the institutions of that same government. But this is exactly what happens when people make an idol of their government and hand too much power to the people within it. People who are merely sinners like all the rest of us. I'm joined now by the daughter of Dr. D. James Kennedy, my very good friend, Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy. Jennifer, your dad saw the law of God as a kind of pathway to freedom and that it was the only true foundation, the only viable foundation for self-government. You're exactly right, Frank. And he knew that a rejection of that law could only lead to tyranny. America's founders knew this as well. President John Adams said that our Constitution was only capable of governing a moral and religious people. If we refuse to be governed by God, we will definitely be governed by human beings and generally by those who seek increasing power over us. And that's exactly where we find ourselves today. We have cast God and his word out of public life and have handed more and more power to more human beings. And not surprisingly, they are misusing and abusing that power. As we face the prospect of government agencies being used as tools in the culture war, there is a good reason to fear the strong arm of government. My dad never tired of calling America back to freedom and back to truth which can only be found in Christ. If we're going to redeem our freedom, we'll need to once again put ourselves under the perfect governance of God himself. My father explains in this portion of his essential message, the moral law of God. And how foolish have men been who have refused to read or to heed the instruction book that comes with every human being, the law of our God. And one thing that I would have you to remember about the law of God, you cannot break it. You can only break yourself upon it. God is not an elected king. And should all of humanity conspire together, they could not diminish his power 
or his will by one iota. Tragically, however, down through the centuries of history, individuals and nations have hurled themselves against God's law only to break themselves into pieces and the fragments have filled our cemeteries, our asylums, our prisons, and our skid rows. You cannot break the law of God. You can only break yourself upon it. Listen, America, wake up and repent, lest that stone grind thee into dust. Thou shalt and thou shalt not is the voice of the Almighty. But we live today in what the New Testament says will occur in the last days. It will be, they say, an age of anomia, lawlessness. And there has never been such an age of lawlessness as that in which we live today. Men have ignored the laws of God. They have jettisoned his commandments and they have plunged themselves in their folly deeper into the mire of debauchery and wickedness and perversion of every sort. And indeed, it is a lawless age in which we live. Reminiscent of what Jesus said would come when the citizens would hate him when he had gone off to a far country and they would cry out, we will not have this man to reign over us. And that is the great question before the nations of the world in this hour. Will men and nations submit to having Jesus Christ, the divine creator of the world, to reign over them, or will they not? What is the purpose of the Bible? What is the great end that it seeks? What is it trying to accomplish? Why did Jesus Christ come and die? Well, you say it was that men might be saved and might have eternal life. Yes, that is true, but it is only partially true. Let me let you hear it in the words of that great Princeton theologian A. A. Hodge. We have seen, he said, that the great end in which all the providential activities of God culminate in this world is the establishment of a universal kingdom of righteousness which is to embrace all redeemed men and unfallen angels and to endure forever in absolute perfection and blessedness. This is God's purpose in this world, to establish a perfect kingdom which shall be perfected only when Christ returns, but a kingdom wherein men and women yield themselves in glad and willing submission to the scepter of their king. Unsurprisingly, an erosion of respect for God's commandments has led to an erosion of ethics in government. Instead, the levers of power are now often being pulled by people with no higher allegiance than to their own political ideology. The results border on tyranny. But there is hope. In a few minutes, we'll share some important new resources to help you recapture the freedom that's being lost. But first, our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb takes a look at the crisis in confidence that has resulted in our own government. Like a lot of Americans, I'm very suspicious of my own government. It's gotten so big. So much has become politicized in a, in a very aggressive way. There is a deep state that has a corrupting influence. Trust in government in America has plummeted recently. For example, an Axios poll found that less than 50% of Americans have confidence in the FBI at present, 
and only 38% of Republicans do, and it gets worse. 20% of the American people believe the government, the American government, operates according to the consent of the government. That, I think, tells you everything. Indeed, ever-growing public agencies, ostensibly under the executive branch of the federal government, seem to now operate as independent entities grinding political axes with little oversight. Perhaps what is most troubling, even our federal law enforcement agencies seem to be affected. Pretty much James Madison's worst nightmare. I mean, I really think that's what it's become, is that the idea that we have this kind of unchecked, enormously powerful branch of government that really isn't within the constitutional structure that was created by the founders, that is very worrying. I think that is decimating the American trust in governance. If we win on November 8th, we are going to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. We're draining the swamp. Many people voted for Donald Trump because they wanted to drain the swamp. They understood that there's a, a terrible level of political corruption within our government agencies, within the government itself. Uh, we know that power corrupts, and we've given too much power to the government. Too many decisions are made in Washington, whether it's an environmental decision or a health care decision, and wherever power congregates, you, you're going to have um, corruption, corruption and waste. And President Trump, to his credit, is trying to dig through a lot of that. And, and the deep state's pushing back against him. The deep state in the media is pushing back against him. A lot of liberals make fun of the term deep state, but I think it's apt to describe what's going on in the security apparatus of the government. Well, let me explain how the deep state works. First, it exists. Uh, the deep state consists of people embedded in the government who have a very clear political agenda to drive out President Trump from office. Uh, they're leftovers from previous administrations. Uh, they have sources in the media who are adamantly anti-Trump, and they work together. The Trump administration has taken some positive steps to do things like civil service reform, to make sure that entrenched bureaucracy isn't quite so entrenched, to take these kind of steps to return us to a more constitutional government. I don't think it's unreasonable for Americans to distrust their government at this point and to push for more investigations into how our federal security agencies are being abused. We need to return to a separation of power, but folks should not just vote and leave it to the folks in office. We've got to keep them accountable. C.S. Lewis once declared, we make men without chess and expect from them virtue and enterprise. We laugh at honor and are shocked to find traitors in our midst. I think a lot of this official corruption stems from a deeper problem, which is the corruption of America's culture uh, by a humanistic elite that is trying to push God out of the public square everywhere it can. It began in the schools and it went to the Ten Commandments monuments. Uh, you know, they'd like to sandblast the mentions of the Bible and Moses off the Supreme Court facade, if they could. Uh, but, you know, in a sense they don't need to because they've removed it from so many places in American society that a lot of people are morally adrift. They've embraced moral relativism. We know as Christians it's, it's not a battle against flesh and blood. It, it is a spiritual battle that goes on all the time and without, without prayer, without being committed to that, I mean, we're going to lose. We cannot just appeal to government to reset the moral climate in America. In fact, government can't do it. We've got to do it as a, as a church, as a body of Christ, in effect. Founding Father John Adams once said, our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. There has to be a standard, a universal standard that we can look to as to what is right and what is wrong, what is moral. And we can find that. We find that in the Bible. We find it in very plain spoken language in the Ten Commandments. We need to, biblical teachings on morality. We need to set examples. And what we need to demand of government is a fr freedom to practice that, a freedom to send our children to schools to teach the, the moral values that we care about. I think that's what's gotten so many people so concerned about the future of our country. They feel that, frankly, things have spun out of control, that, that the people aren't in charge anymore, that is essentially Washington is in charge of the country. And, and frankly, it should be the other way around. I think that, I think we can all hope that that dichotomy changes in the future.
we've got to hold on to that sense of hope that this can change. There's a reason why this has been exposed. I think part of it is because there have been a lot of Christians who've been praying that that which has been hidden would be revealed. Well, being revealed is only the first step. Now it needs to be corrected. The current trend in our government is indeed worrisome, and it reflects a crisis in our culture. Runaway government combined with bureaucrats untethered from the moral law and drunk with power results in a chilling loss of liberty. But we have developed some important resources to shed light on this problem and to help you recapture your freedom. Dr. Jerry Newcomb, who brought us that report earlier, is here with me in the studio right now. Jerry, tell us a little bit about these resources we have available. Well, first of all, Robert Knight, who is a friend of this ministry, is a veteran uh, journalist and, in fact, started years ago with the Los Angeles Times. He's written a wonderful book for us, available exclusively through this ministry, A Nation Worth Fighting For. And he gives 10 specific steps that we could take to help restore this nation. And he talks about the left's assault on the family and on traditional values and even on free speech. And he gives us practical steps in which Christians can get back involved in the public square, make a difference wherever God has called them to be. Frank, this is a book that every Christian should read. Indeed, indeed. Well, we will send you a copy of Robert Knight's book, A Nation Worth Fighting For, 10 Steps to Restore Freedom, as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 877-962-7677. Or you can go online to djkm.org. And Jerry, we have an additional resource to go along with this tremendous book, A Nation Worth Fighting For. What an important book that our friend Robert Knight has written. Tell us a little bit about the DVD that we're offering. Sure. This is also something available only through this ministry. This is a DVD that we put together of some great interviews and reports and so forth on the subject of justice and integrity, a special report DVD. And the, what this is, uh, Frank, is it shows us how so many Americans have lost trust in their government yeah. because you have these people involved in the deep state. And so here we have some, some experts in D.C., including Robert Knight, including former Senator Jim DeMint, who are basically showing us what the problem is and then how to get back. So we're at the place where, our, as a people, we're more dependent on our government than any time in human history. At the same time, we are losing confidence and faith in government. How will this DVD help us uh, you know, deal with all that? Well, I think it really shines the light on, on what the problem is. I think part of the reason that we're in the mess that we're in is because Christians basically abandoned the political process and said, oh no, politics, that's dirty business. Yeah. But as you know, D. James Kennedy used to warn us against that and say we should be faithful where God has called us to be. Right. Very good. The erosion of trust in agencies like the Justice Department, the FBI, and other powerful government entities is a national crisis, and our freedoms are being compromised. Contact us right away to, to receive these two key resources as our thanks for your generous donation of $40 or more. Or you can get Robert Knight's book, A Nation Worth Fighting For, 10 Steps to Restore Freedom for a Generous Donation. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll-free 877 877- 962-7677, or you can go online to djkm.org. The unique genius of America's founding fathers was in the checks and balances they placed in our system of government. On the one hand, they recognized the biblical truth that government is necessary and given to us by God. On the other hand, they recognize that those given the power to govern 
are themselves fallen, fallible people who will tend to abuse power. James Madison, often called the father of the Constitution, framed the dilemma well in one of the Federalist Papers. He wrote, If men were angels, no government would be necessary. If angels were to govern men, neither external nor internal controls on government would be necessary. But, of course, men are not angels. So both government and limitations on government are necessary. In recent years, we have seen a cascade of government abuse against its citizens. We saw the IRS was used as a weapon against conservatives and Christian organizations by the Obama administration. We see the relying on the fraudulent so-called hate map of the Southern Poverty Law Center. And worse yet, a return to the corruption of J. Edgar Hoover, with the FBI allegedly spying on the Trump campaign during the 2016 election season. With increasing dependency, more and more Americans have made an idol of government, enlarging it to an unprecedented size and expecting it to do everything from providing jobs to giving us health care. And the checks against abusing that power, first and foremost, personal integrity, resulting from adherence to God's law, have fallen by the wayside. History has shown that a people who will not govern themselves will ultimately be governed by tyrants. Our hope lies in returning to the Word of God. George Washington himself issued a prophetic warning for every generation when he wrote, of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. In vain would that man claim the tribute of patriotism who should labor to subvert them. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Truths That Transform. We'll see you next time. Next week on Truths That Transform. Jesus Christ is truth. And Satan, as Christ said, is a liar and was a liar from the beginning and is the father of lies. Uh, there's a pattern of corruption here that's far and deep, and Americans are wondering if anybody's ever going to be punished for it. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.